today the topic on which i want to uh, give my uh, lecture is uh, molecular spectroscopy though molecular spectroscopy is a very uh, vast uh, region of uh, science so uh, total molecular spectroscopy i cannot describe within this uh, one and half hour but part of the molecular spectroscopy mainly i will discuss here with and share my ideas with you to people that will be mainly the infrared uh, spectroscopy okay so if we start our topic first uh, what is first we have to decide uh, we have to define what is spectroscopy actually spectroscopy is the study of the interaction of light or you can say that electromagnetic radiation and the matter matter means it may be atom it may be molecule okay when the incident light will interact with a material then what will happen due to that interaction the light that is incident light there are two phenomena may happen one is the absorption of the radiation or another will be the emission of the radiation by that interacted matter when this phenomena happen then what will happen, what will uh, what is the output the output of the interaction will give us some data data means here in this case type in this type of interaction the data will be in terms of frequency or in terms of wavelength and sometime in terms of intensity so we will get after the interaction of that matter and the light we will get some information or some data in the form of frequency wavelength or the intensity of change in intensity of the light and what are the two phenomena which will happen one is absorption another one is emission by that material so when the light will incident on that material material either will absorb the light from that radiation or material will give some emit material will emit some of the radiation and when this will happen we will get three things frequency or wavelength or intensity of light when <coughs> i'll get this data from this data what in terms of physics what we can understand we can understand about the size of that material with whom that radiation has been interacted we can uh, identify the shape of that material we can identify the flexibility of that material or we can identify the electronic arrangement of that material as a whole in a nutshell we can say that we can get an idea about the molecular structure of that material so if a radiation is interacting with a molecule and if i am getting the information that means from that information i can get a idea about the structure of that molecule and if that happens then the whole phenomena is known as spectroscopy so spectroscopy is an application you can say of the interaction of material and radiation which gives us the idea about that material so in this figure i have shown you that what is the procedure of doing spectroscopy so for spectroscopy i need a light then there are several uh, part of this uh, the light we have to convert it you have to pass it through some collimeter through some grating or through some prism then we can select because when a light is coming from a tube suppose or a bulb we say that that light is a white light always for spectroscopy do, there is no need to use white light we can be specific about a single color wavelength light so what i can do from a white light i can selectively select some specific color of light and that light will pass through that material about whom i need the information when it will pass through the material then what will happen i'll get some data about i already told that you that i'll get some information about the frequency or the wavelength now in this case what i will get i will get a change in frequency of the from the incident light so suppose incident light is uh, yellow color light and after interacting with the material i got a separate separate color of light that means in this case i have shown you that i have incident light on that sample is yellow but after interacting with that sample the light became red so i got some change okay and if i am getting that change definitely i can get some idea about the material now this is uh, this is the one aspect of the spectroscopy that uh, that is that we can um, get the about the information of the structure of the material but there are other aspects of spectroscopy also because it has a severe application in our industry mainly the uh, 
some physical part also that in size shape we can get the information similarly about the chemical structure of the material also we can get information from the spectroscopy not only that in the pharmacy industry to design a drug or to uh, market a drug the needful experimental technique is spectroscopy the spectroscopy can only give me the idea that in the drug molecule what are the components is there any impurity in the drug molecule or not okay so in the pharmacy industry also um, spectroscopy plays a vital role in the industry of cosmetics also we know that nowadays all the ladies mainly they are dependent on the cosmetics so in the cosmetics industry also spectroscopy has a vital role okay in the food industry nowadays in the food industry spectroscopy are severely used because in the food industry because we know that that is a main problem of our, of, with our food are the contamination so if you have a contamination in some food spectroscopy can easily detect that what type of contamination in it so if you go to the any sweet shop you can see that there are several sweets on which we have metal coating okay so those are healthy or those are non healthy or if we have a mixture of some other um, material in that food items also that can be easily detected by the spectroscopy and lastly in the part of agriculture in agriculture also to tell uh, to identify the soil quality or to uh, identify what are the mixed components in the soil that means uh, any um, polluted material are mixed or not or the um, quality of the soil which is uh, suitable for the plantation or not that can be detected also by the spectroscopic technique now when we are dealing with the spectroscopy because in this case light play, plays a huge role and the question is what light i want to mean i want to mean that light which we can get free of cost and that light is the sunlight okay so sunlight is the source of light so to do the spectroscopy the light we will get that light there is no need to buy that light from anywhere we can get it from the sun now sun is a source of light for our life all of us know that but sun is a source of light of all type of light now what i want to mean um, uh, regarding this what type of light because sun is a source which gives us different types of light if i want to discuss about those different types i can say that sun gives us gamma ray also sun gives us x rays also sun gives us ultraviolet rays also sun gives us visible ray it gives us infrared microwave television wave radio wave so these are all different kinds of light which generally comes from sun to us out of these all categories of light some of them are useful for human life yes some of them are harmful for human life also now out of this all lights which are coming from sun to us only a very small part of light we can see the part of light which we can see that is only a visible part so here i have shown you that part also a visible part of the light which is only observable for the human being other part of the light we cannot view it okay now let us discuss about the this range of light which comes from the sun if i want to uh, describe you about uh, the range the range can be described in many terms in terms of frequency i can describe it you can in terms of wavelength i, I can describe it here i have described in this figure the range of the wavelength which normally uh, we consider it that the from sun the light comes it starts from 1 meter range up to 10 to the power minus 13 meter range so the range of light wavelength which comes from sun to us it deals in between 1 meter to 10 to the power minus 13 meter so from one around in the 1 meter range we, normally we get the radio waves and in 10 to the power minus 13 meter range normally we get the gamma rays okay and all of us knows that only in between point uh, 4000 angstrom to 7000 angstrom is the range of that light which normally we can see that means that is the visible range of light okay now the range where we have that 1 meter range that means radio wavelength here the wavelength of light is very high whereas in 10 to the power minus 13 meter of range where the wavelength of light will be very short that means the frequency of light will be very high in 10 to the power minus 13 meter of range and the frequency of light will be very low in 10 to 1 meter of range so in this figure 
I have elaborately described you um, the range of that light in terms of wavelength also, in terms of frequency also, and in terms of energy also. Because when we describe light and when we describe spectroscopy, there are several terms we deal with. With some time, uh, we deal with uh, the light in terms of frequency. The unit, we will use it in terms of hertz. Sometimes we use the light in terms of wavelength. And when we describe the wavelength, we deal uh, with units like uh, centimeters, meters, nanometers, micrometers, or angstroms. Okay. And when we deal the light with its energy, then we describe it in terms of electron volt, joules, mega electron volt, kilo electron volt, etc., etc. So, in the the range of the light, which we can view which comes from the sun. We already I have told you that they, they lie in the visible region of light. And visible region, all of us know that the note of the year, that means it will start from the violet light, then indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, in this way the light will move. And after red, again, the range will be invisible for us, that will be infrared. Okay, so these are the range of light. Now, when we are discussing about the range of light and the interaction of different lights with the matter, that means in this different um, uh, light range, that means suppose light is interacting uh, of the X-ray region with the material, then we have a specific name of spectroscopy. Similarly, if the light is interacting, uh, which is which lie in the visible region and it is interacting with the material, then we will give a separate name of the spectroscopy. When the infrared is interacting with the light, then we will give a separate name of the spectroscopy. So in this way, there are several kinds of spectroscopy are available in the market. And what are those? If I want to categorize it, the names are microwave spectroscopy, infrared spectroscopy, Raman spectroscopy, electronic spectroscopy, spin resonance spectroscopy. It is divided into two parts, NMR and ESR spectroscopy. That means nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy and electron spin resonance spectroscopy. X-ray crystallography, mass spectroscopy, electron microscopy. So there are several spectroscopic techniques through which we can get the idea about the material or we can apply it for different region of the industry. Now what are the application? Depending upon the frequency range, I have, I have already told you that different, different light have different, different frequency range. So depending upon the frequency range, they are classified. Each class has its own application. If we discuss it in the basic basic science, that means it has its application in physics, it has its application in chemistry, it has its application in biology, electronics, biotechnology, and all other things. So it has a severe application. Okay. Now, what are the parameters we use to deal with the spectroscopy? Because before dealing with spectroscopy, we should have an idea about the parameters. What is the quantity we have to uh, we have to use so that we can get the different different information. The first parameter is wavelength of light. The second parameter is velocity, velocity of light. We know that velocity of light is a fixed quantity in vacuum. It is 3 to the power 10 centimeter per second. The third quantity is frequency. Frequency is nothing but the number of waves per second. The fourth quantity is wave number. Always in spectroscopy, there are, if you deal with different spectrometers, you will see that we don't deal with lambda or nu, we deal with wave number, nu bar. Nu bar is nothing but one upon lambda. We deal with energy also, and there is a very important formula with which we deal with the spectroscopy, that is the Planck's law, E is equal to h nu. Sometime we will uh, describe it not in terms of h nu, but in terms of h cut omega, where omega is the angular velocity. So these are some basic terms we generally use in case of spectroscopy. Now about this term, if you want to describe, describe about this term, there are three important parameters. Already I have told you that wavelength, frequency, and the energy. Okay. Now when we deal with the light, then we know that light is a wave. Okay. And we can say that light is behave like light behaves like a simple harmonic wave from a source, and it moves in a straight line. Okay. And when it since it is light then we know that definitely it has two components. One is electric field component, another one is magnetic field component. So if the light here in this figure I have shown you, the vibration of this, these two components, because we know that if light has to propagate, then that two components should vibrate perpendicular to each other. One component will be electric field, another component will be magnetic field. And both components are perpendicular to each other and perpendicular to the direction of propagation. 
if we have this term then we can see that yes light is propagating the next phenomena of uh, the spectroscopy is to describe about the two topic i have discussed you that is one is absorption another one is emission so without absorption and an emission you cannot do spectroscopy so what does it mean absorption and emission so absorption of photon and emission of photon so in this figure i have shown you a figure of a molecule suppose i have a molecule i have not disturbed it okay when a photon photon means light when a photon incident on this molecule initially the molecule will be always all particle always it is the tendency of all system to be in a stable state like suppose i am to uh, compare it with myself or you can compare it with yourself what is your stable state your stable state is the state when you sleep because at that moment you do less work only you have the respiration so that is your stable state always stable state means ground state in case of atom or molecule so when the atom or molecule is in a ground state that is its stable state that means at that point it is less disturbed now i have a light incident light on that atom then what will happen when the light will incident the atom may absorb that light and due to that absorption of light the atom may change its position when the atom will change its position who will change the position nucleus always not will change the position the new only electron will change the position because electron is very light and nucleus is very heavy so the nucleus will not move only the lighter particle first will move so electron will change its position so in this figure i have shown you that initially in the lower most orbit the electron was there after absorbed a photon is incident on that system the electron will absorb that light and will go to the excited state it will go to the next state the process will be known as absorption so i'll describe it again with you a little bit in elaborate way when uh, i have a molecule or i have a atom every system has some energy levels okay mainly we describe this two energy level in this two term first one the energy level which is less disturbed energy level that is known as ground state always ground state is will be stable state when you are not disturbing the system and if you are disturbing the system after the disturbance what will happen the system will get disturbed it will get angry and when it will get angry it will go to the excited you can compare it with self, uh, yourself when you are uh, quarreling with some uh, your friend and you get angry and what will happen the that state after when you are angry your state is not the stable state your next state is not the ground state you are in the excited state okay so when the you are giving a radiation to a molecule or a atom the atom or molecule will absorb that radiation if it absorbs it will go to its excited state okay so the phenomena which will happen to move the molecule from its ground state to the excited state is known as absorption so this is the first process of spectroscopy excited state is not a stable state for you also excited state is not a stable state. suppose you get very angry is it possible that you are you you remain angry for the whole day it is not possible after some time you have to come down and for that to become calm down you can uh, you can apply any technique maybe you will go and you will give a punch to your friend okay and after that you will become calm so that is the main requirement we have to be in our ground state or in our stable state so suppose you have disturbed the system it goes to the excited state that means uh, and after uh, some time in uh, after staying some time in the excited state that atom or that molecule have to come down to its ground state and when it will come down to its ground state it will emit some energy when that process will happen this process will be known as emission now the question is what amount of energy is required to get the system absorbed or what amount of energy is required to get the system emit for this we will use the famous formula of planck and that famous concept that is delta e is equal to h the atom or molecule which is in the ground state it will only move to the excited state when you are giving that much of energy which is equivalent to the energy gap between these two states if you are not giving that energy then the atom or molecule will not move to the excited state so if we are giving delta e where delta e, e here it is eg minus ee eg is the energy of the ground state and ee is the energy of the excited state so if you are have given this amount of energy to the system then the atom or the molecule will only absorb that energy and it will go to the excited state and after reaching the excited state it will stay there for some time and after that it has to come down 
when it will come down it will emit the same amount of energy so the amount of energy it absorbed let it be h nu to move to the excited state then the same amount of energy it will emit when it will come down to the ground state okay so this is the process absorption and emission i have shown you with that uh, small type of figure suppose you are not giving a delta e amount of energy in the left hand side figure concentrate yourself in the left hand side figure suppose i have a atom the electron is moving in orbit and out from outside you have given a energy which is not equivalent to delta e which is required here if you are not giving that energy the atom will not absorb that energy it will say okay no thanks you have given wrong energy so i will not absorb it so there will be no absorption but in the second figure if you have given that required amount of energy delta e then what will happen the atom will absorb absorb that energy and the process of absorption will take place and it will be happy so it will go to the excited state in the third figure i have shown you that excited state so it reached from the ground state to excited state now now what i have told you excited state is not a stable state so the atom or the molecule has to come down then what will happen it will after some time it will emit that energy and it will come its to its original state so the second last process is known as emission and the first process is known as absorption now how we can view this absorption and emission it is very easy to understand absorption and emission but how we can view it in the lower figure i have shown you the uh, 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 visible spectrum of the absorption and emission the picture a here it is the spec ab emission spectrum and picture b is the absorption spectrum why that is so you can question that why how you can understand that this the lower one is the absorption and upper one is the emission why not the vice versa the reason is the lower one is the absorption because suppose i have given a in the range of energy i have given a white light white light means combination of seven colors so i have give white given white light to the uh to that molecule A molecule will have only absorb that amount of energy which is required for it it to transit it from its ground state to the excited state. So if I am giving a whole range of energy, suppose the molecule needs only a light which is near about uh, five ninety uh, nanometer here. It is nanometer five ninety nanometer. So if it, it, its requirement delta E requirement is five ninety nanometer. then only it will absorb that quantity of light from the whole range of uh, electromagnetic spectrum or whole range of white light so when it will absorb that light what will happen it has already absorbed and so what will happen to the absorption spectrum in absorption spectrum we will get a gap in that case so you will see that around 590 nanometer there are uh, two black lines in the lower one aspect so that black lines means the atom or the molecule already absorbed those two lines okay and the upper picture is the emission spectrum of that atom or the molecule why that is so because in this case after reaching the excited state when the atom will come down to the ground state it will emit that quantity of light only so the amount of radiation it has absorbed so uh, i want to ask that uh, till now um, the, I, the the part i have discussed it is understandable Yes, ma'am. If you have any doubt, uh, ma'am, we will take the question at the last of the uh, session. Okay, okay. May continue, ma'am. Fine, fine. Okay. So let us discuss a little bit more about uh, the emission and absorption here. Actually, uh, when we apply uh, the spectroscopy or the uh, concept of absorption and emission in electronics. so in electronics uh, uh, there are two languages zero and one so in terms of zero and one also we can um, describe uh, the absorption and the emission here you can see that i have given six units of light 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 and for absorption when it is passes uh, through the material one of the unit is disappeared here in the right hand side figure you can see that the two unit the unit 2 is not observed so if you have uh, the incident light then what will happen after absorption one unit will be disappeared and if it is disappeared that information will come in terms of you can say that zero and when the emission will happen that means from the excited state the atom or molecule will come down to the ground state at that moment it will give you that light when it will get get that light that information will come to you in terms of one okay 
So these are the two languages normally we use when we use light or the information of light in electronics, we use these two units. So these are the two uh, spectrum of uh, sun, you can say that one in terms of absorption, another, another range in terms of emission. The upper one is the absorption spectrum of sun. You can say that from sun we have several lights. When some material is uh, absorbing that light, you can see that in the whole region there are some black lines. If you have a, some black lines in the background of color, that means it is the absorption spectrum. Whereas if you have a background black with some lines, colorful lines in that, that means it is the emission spectrum. So here I have shown you some emission spectrum of some elements. Some of the elements which have absorbed light in blue and red region, in yellow, green region. So the lower one, uh, lower four figures of the emission spectrum and the upper one is the absorption spectrum. So that's all, that is the output of the spectroscopy normally we deal with. Now, <clears throat> to discuss about the molecular spectroscopy, we should know that, suppose uh, there are two types of spectroscopy normally we discuss in physics. One is atomic spectroscopy, another one is molecular spectroscopy. Now I want to uh, divide this spectroscopy into two parts and I will move to the next part. That means I am not interested now in atomic spectroscopy, but rather I will discuss with you the molecular spectroscopy. Okay. So in the molecular spectroscopy or in the molecule, when we discuss spectroscopy, we first have to discuss about the energy levels of a molecule. You should know and keep this point in mind that in a molecule, there are some, always some energy levels are there. Already I have discussed with you that we have ground state, ground energy level, ground state, or we have some excited states. Now, when we deal with the molecular spectroscopy, the energy levels which we have to discuss that not only in only ground state and excited state. Now, the ground state and excited state, different energy levels will be divided into three categories. What are those categories? Some energy levels are known as rotational energy levels. Some energy levels are known as vibrational energy levels. And some energy levels are known as electronic energy levels, okay? Now, electronics energy level already you, you know from your uh, plus two physics that electronic energy level is those levels with, with, with whom we have discussed with n is equal to one, n is equal to two, n is equal to three, all these things. But in between any two energy level, electronic energy level, you have some vibrational energy level. Also. That we have not, not discussed till now. And between any two vibrational energy levels, there are some energy levels which are known as rotational energy levels. So in this figure, I have to, I have tried to show you that there are two electronic energy levels. One is for n is equal to one, that is actually the ground state. Another one is for n is equal to two, that is the first excited state. But in between this first and the ground state and the first excited states, there are some vibrational energy levels. Okay. And in between any two vibrational levels, there are some rotational energy. So in every molecule, in every molecule in the universe which exists in nature, they have these three types of energy levels. Okay. So transition may be possible between the rotational energy level also. Transition may, may be possible between the vibrational energy level also. And transition may be possible between the electronic energy levels also. So when the transition of energy level is apply, applied between two rotational levels, then that spectroscopy or the information from the transition you will get, it is known as rotational spectroscopy. And the other name of rotational spectroscopy is known as microwave spectroscopy. If you are getting the transition between two vibrational levels only, I'll discuss this in later on in detail also, then that spectroscopy will be known as vibrational spectroscopy. And in other words, it is known as infrared spectroscopy. And the third transition is the electronic uh, transition between electronic levels. So this, if the transition is happening between electronic levels and you are getting the information from that transition, that spectroscopy will be known as electronic spectroscopy. Okay. So these are three very important part of the spectroscopy. Now the question is, first I am describing the transition between two rotational energy levels. I have shown, I told you that if you have the energy transition between two rotational levels, that spectroscopy will be known as rotational spectroscopy. 
okay rotation means some, somehow i am discussing the rotation of the system okay if you have a rotational spectroscopy normally the range of electromagnetic spectrum which deals with rotational spectroscopy it is known as microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum or the microwave spectroscopy and the region of the microwave spectroscopy is uh, in terms of wave number it will be 1 to 100 cm inverse for the rotational spectroscopy the main parameter is the rotation of the molecule what will happen in this case the molecule has to rotate suppose you are rotating the molecule if you are rotating the molecule what will happen the dipole of the molecule will change its direction now in this figure i have tried to show you the change in dipole of the molecule dipole means the molecule have a dipole moment now for the rotational spectroscopy the mandatory condition is that if the molecule has a dipole moment the molecule will give you a rotation and if the molecule will give you a rotation then you will get a information from that molecule and that spectroscopy is known as rotational spectroscopy okay so for rotational spectroscopy the molecule which show the micro uh, spectra or uh, rotational spectra they must carry a dipole moment okay if they have dipole moment the molecule will be eligible to rotate so when you have incident light on that molecule the molecule will rotate when the molecule will rotate it will give absorb or emit and when it will absorb and emit you will get the information about that molecule okay so if a molecule have a positive and negative charge difference that means the dipole moment the rotation of this type of molecule normally happens around the center of gravity this is a specific type of spectroscopy i will not describe this spectroscopy in detail but it is a huge part of the spectroscopy so which what type of molecule will give the microwave uh, spectra normally the molecule who have permanent dipole moment example hydrogen chloride hydrogen bromide these are the example but h2 will not give you a microwave spectra because it has no dipole moment the topic which i want to describe with you people that is infrared spectroscopy or the vibrational spectroscopy okay so what i have told you for the vibrational spectroscopy what is responsible what transition will be responsible the responsible transition is the transition between two vibrational levels okay so what are the condition first condition is if the displacement of the molecule or we can say that the displacement of the molecular vibration is about the mean position suppose i have a molecule hcl hydrogen chloride it is vibrating only it is vibrating with respect to its mean position okay when it happens it gives rise a change in the dipole moment about that direction so what is the reason reason is h is lighter one cl is heavy one so when a system it moves when the heavier particle is there it will try to keep itself as it is okay so h is moving and cl is keeping itself in track so when you have getting a displacement of this molecule the charge center is displacing and in this case what we are getting we are getting a change in the dipole moment okay along the direction of the displacement and when it happens so this is the mandatory condition if it happens in a system and you will get a change in the dipole moment then only you can say that the system will give you vibrational spectrum or infrared spectrum so the molecule will give vibrational spectrum or infrared spectrum or not it will depend that it has a change in dipole moment or not if a molecule have a change in dipole moment due to the vibration it will give you infrared spectrum so uh, the condition for a molecule to be infrared active is that it should have a change in dipole moment okay so we can say that the vibrational spectra will be observable only those molecule who has a change in dipole moment so what is the condition mainly if the molecule is heteronuclear in nature so hcl is the example of the heteronuclear molecule they are generally have a uh, change in dipole moment and they are infrared active if the molecule is homonuclear in nature normally in this those case of molecule they don't show 
infrared activity. Okay. So for, in this case, what does it mean? That means uh, how I can change the dipole moment. For changing the dipole moment, the procedure is very easy. We have to remove one of the atom or we can remove both the atom from its equilibrium position. Okay. If we remove the atom from its equilibrium position, then what will happen? The atom or the system will experience a restoring force. Okay. And when the system will experience a restoring force, then what will happen? Then it will behave like a spring. Okay. And we can then express its movement in terms of a simple harmonic motion. Okay. So let us discuss about that. Suppose I have a system HCl and I have a vibration of that system. That means it is displacing its uh, position from its equilibrium position. And when it is displacing its position from its equilibrium position, you, you are applying some force from outer side. Then what will happen? The system will generate a restoring force and it will try to keep the system as it is. And at that point, what will happen? The system will behave like a spring. So the system will behave, when the system will behave like a spring, then we, we know that from our basic physics concept, it will behave uh, or it will follow a law, which the law will, is known as Hooke's law. It's a very famous law. So where if is that applied force, due to that applied force, what happens? The system is displaced. Let us just consider that displacement is X. So the force is proportional to the displacement. If you are applying more force, you can create more displacement. If you are applying less force, you will create less displacement. So F is in proportional to X. F is the applied force and X is the displacement due to that applied force. If I get equal sign, I get a constant. That constant is known as K. Okay. So F is the force, K is the constant. That constant is known as proportionality constant. Sorry. Okay. Now, uh, this is the very well-known formula for us. Now here I have a negative sign. The negative sign is due to the condition that since X is increasing in one direction, then the force will increase in the opposite direction because the direction of force and the direction of X is opposite. So Hooke's law implies that the energy of the particle increases as the particle moves in any either direction up or any direction which can move across it. Now, suppose I have force and I have a displacement, but definitely I have some work done because work done is nothing but force into displacement. So let I have a work that must be done to displace the particle for a small displacement, let it be dx. So I have a applied force F and due to that applied force, I have a displacement dx. So what will be the work done? The work done will be U. And this work done normally, it's stored as a potential energy in that system. So what is the formula for work done here? Since I have a very small displacement dx, so I can say that the work done is du, that is equal to f into dx. So the force that, uh, that the spring uh, exerts on the particle, <clears throat> now what will happen? You have applied force, you have got a work done. Now what is the tendency of that system? The tendency of that system is that to keep itself in the opposite direction. That means it, it wants to stay as, as it is. So it will act against that applied force. Okay, so what will be the force exerted by the system? It will be F and that is equal to minus F applied. So I can say that if applied is the force due to which you are getting the displacement and the exerted force by the system is that to keep it itself in its original position, that is F. So F is always opposite to the applied force. So F is equal to minus F applied. So in the previous formula, what I can write? DU is equal to F applied into DX. So I want to replace F applied by F, which is the applied restoring force. So I can say that DU is equal to minus F DX. So easily I can construct that DU DX is equal to minus F. So this is a very important relation between force and the potential energy. And all of us know this equation. If this equation happens, then I can say that du dx is equal to minus fx. And f is what? Minus kx. So du dx is equal to kx. So I can say that du is equal to kx dx. 
Easily by integrating it, I can get the value of u. u is what? Half a x square. And this formula, all of us know that this is nothing but the formula of simple harmonic motion. We have discussed all these things in our class two after graduation, and now you are in MSc. So you know that the potential energy is half k x square for a simple harmonic motion. Now, this case, in this case, what I have discussed, the displacement is only x. Now, for a system, real system, real system is, <coughs> I have told you that HCl. So you know that HCl has a bond length. That bond length is known as the equilibrium distance. So now you have applied a force from outside due to which you have stretched the bond length. Okay? So you have created distance x. Now here, in terms of x, I will put a term r. So due to the application of force, the re is stretched. Now I have, due to stretching, the new bond length is r. Okay? Then what I can say? What will be the displacement? Due to the stretching, I have a new distance r. And initially, the bond length was re. So what will be x here? x will be r minus re. So I can describe that f is equal to minus k into r minus re because here r minus r minus re is the equivalent of x. So I can easily describe the potential energy as half k r minus re square. Okay. Now, if you want to describe the motion of the particle, motion of the particle, I mean, हम सबको पता है the motion of the particle <coughs> gives us the famous Newton's law, where the f is, I can describe it in terms of acceleration where m is the mass a is the acceleration the applied force is equal to m a m a means m d square x dt square now you replace the value of f here f is equal to minus kx minus kx is equal to m d square x dt square easily I can say that it is minus kx is equal to m x double dot because that is the d square x dt square now easily I can solve this equation this is a very famous solution and all of us know the solution of this equation. If you solve it, the equation you will get it as x is equal to a cos 2 pi omega t plus phi, where phi is the phase, omega is the angular frequency or the angular velocity. You can verify the correctness of this equation by only <coughs> differentiating x in terms of t, dx dt and d square x dt, and then you put it in that previous equation. If you do it, what you will get? You will get the value of angular frequency, omega. If you get that, the frequency will get it as 1 upon 2 pi under root k by m in frequency. And in centimeter inverse, you will get that it will omega bar, that is 1 by 2 pi c under root k by m. So in this way, if you put that equation, you can get the frequency of the vibration of that system with which frequency it is vibrating. So in this, this two figure, I have shown you the movement of the particle. In the first case, is non, normally a bob is moving uh, from a pendulum and it is vibrating with the frequency. And the left hand side, I have shown you that you can compare it with the figure of HCl because, and the H is moving. So it is stretching and expanding. So I am compressing and I am expanding this system. So if you have such type of compression and, and the elongation, such type of motion is known as, we know that it is simple harmonic motion. And if that is so, in this figure, I have, uh, I, I have, I tried to show you that motion. Normally, for simple harmonic motion, we can describe this motion as a circular motion. So it is moving in a circular. You see that spring is moving, and the lower part, I have given you the energy for that system. Here, I have getting total energy. Total energy means it has both terms. One is kinetic energy, another one is potential energy. So potential energy already I have described you. That is half k x square. It depends on the x. When you have value of maximum x, maximum potential energy. When you have maximum potential energy at that time for simple harmonic motion, all of us know that the kinetic energy will be minimum. And when the potential energy will be maximum, the kinetic energy will be maximum because at midpoint, the velocity will be maximum. So in this way, the motion will move. So if we compare that previous type in case of our real sample, HCl. So if HCl is moving, vibrating in this way, which is the frequency of the HCl, then what will happen? The total energy of the system will give you this type of figure. So when you are not disturbing the system, initially the system will be in its stable state. Okay, in stable state, that is RE, the bond length will be RE. Now, if you are applying force from outside, it will vibrate and then it will move to its upper excited state. Because when you are giving some more energy, that is more displacement, the potential energy will be more and the figure will be like this. 
So this is the figure for the real uh, HCl molecule of that uh, comparing comparison uh, compared to that uh, uh, simple harmonic motion of the system. So this is the <coughs> energy diagram of a diatomic molecule, which gives us the idea about the frequency. Okay. Now let us discuss it for a molecular case. Consider I have a diatomic molecule where we have two atoms. The two atoms are allowed to move freely with maintaining their equilibrium position. Now what I want to apply, I have applied a force from outside and due to that I got two displacements. One is x1, another one is x2 and I have two masses for that particle because it is a diatomic molecule, two masses were m1 and m2. So if we want to apply Hooke's law in this case, then I will get two terms of energy in this um, uh, uh, motion. One is kinetic energy T, another one is potential energy. So potential energy will be what? Already I have described it. There is half K X2 minus X1 square and kinetic energy will be what? Half M1 X1 dot square. X, X1 dot means is velocity and uh, half M2 X2 dot square. So this is kinetic energy and the potential energy. Now this is in terms of X. Now when we apply it for the spectroscopy, there are several molecule, atom in a molecule. So there is no need to consider that x1, x2, x3. Rather, rather we will use uh, equilibrium distance. So suppose I have a diatomic molecule, I am applying a Hooke's law. And if I am applying the Hooke's law, I can describe potential energy in terms of half k r minus r equilibrium square. Okay. Now you can cons compare it with a single vibrating molecule. If you have compared it with the simple vibrating molecule, you will get the frequency. And if you have the frequency, you have all information from that system. Okay. Now, if I have the, uh, the vibration of the molecule and I have applied a force from outside and due to that vibration, I got the frequency and it is vibrating from its equilibrium position and I got a distortion from that molecule. Then I will initial, in initial case, I will consider the motion of this particle as a simple harmonic motion or I'll compare the motion as a uh, simple harmonic motion. If I can compare it as a simple harmonic motion, then it is very really easy for us to write the equation of a simple harmonic motion. Okay. And for the simple harmonic oscillator or the for simple harmonic motion, we can write down the Schrodinger equation. Okay. And we can very well solve it because all of us know that there are some standard cases where we can solve the Schrodinger equation. So if I am comparing a diatomic molecule with a simple harmonic oscillator, then easily I can write down the Schrodinger equation for that simple harmonic oscillation or simple harmonic oscillator. And what will be the Schrodinger equation? It will be d square psi dx square twice m by x bar square e minus half kx square. Half kx square means the potential energy of that oscillator. Into psi is equal to zero. Now there is a standard protocol, protocol to solve uh, the Schrodinger equation. If I can solve the Schrodinger equation, what I can get? I can get the energy of that harmonic oscillator. And if I get the energy of that harmonic oscillator, I know everything about that system. Okay, because my ultimate mot motto is to get the information about the system. So I have an incident radiation. We will apply the force on that system due to which the system is vibrating. It is behaving like a harmonic oscillator. and if I want to solve that harmonic oscillator, I have to Schrodinger, apply Schrodinger equation for that. So these are the steps to apply the Schrodinger equation. If we apply the step of Schrodinger equation, it will take a lot of time to solve this equation. So I have given a smaller step to that. If you solve the Schrodinger equation, you will get the energy level of the harmonic oscillator by this formula. And this formula is what? It is Ev is equal to V plus half H omega. Okay. Well, V is the quantum number because to describe any energy level, you need a quantum number. Quantum number here, it is, the, it is known as the vibrational quantum number V. So EV, if you solve the Schrodinger equation for this harmonic oscillator, the energy will come as EV is equal to V plus half H omega. Okay. In terms of, uh, since it, I am calculating energy, normally energy in case of quantum mechanics, we calculate it in terms of joule. If, if needed, we can convert it in electron volt. So EV will be V plus half H omega. Omega is the oscillation frequency. While V is the quantum numbers. Quantum numbers will vary from 0 to N numbers. But in spectroscopy, we don't use joules. In spectroscopy, normally we use centimeter inverse or meter inverse. 
So in spectroscopic unit, we have to convert this energy in terms of spectroscopic unit. What is the way to convert it? Only you have to divide it by Hc. If you divide it, the unit will come in terms of centimeter inverse. The formula will be in terms of spectroscopic unit, V plus half omega bar oscillation. Okay. Already I have discussed you about this omega bar quantity. So for simple harmonic oscillator, we got the energy in terms of spectroscopic unit as E V naught, it is epsilon V, will be equal to V plus half omega bar. Okay, now V is the uh, vibrational quantum number. If you put, when well, it starts from zero, if you put V is equal to zero, you will get some energy. Then the energy is not zero in this case. That energy is half omega bar. Okay, it implicates that if you have a diatomic molecule, and if you are at a lower energy state, already I have told you the lower energy state is the ground state. That means there is no, there should not be any energy. But in this case, what you are getting, if you are giving V is equal to zero also, you are getting some amount of energy. That means vibrational level can never be zero. It has always some energy. That means if you are not giving in an energy from outside also, if you have a diatomic molecule, it will vibrate. It will little bit vibrate without any energy also. This type of energy is known as zero point energy. That means without disturbing the system also, the system is vibrating. So it happens in every system which exists in the universe. If any molecule, if you consider water, if you consider hydrogen, if you consider oxygen, if you consider carbon dioxide, everybody is vibrating a little bit because they have some vibrational energy and that is zero vibrational energy. Now, since we have the energy, now next part is very easy. Now I want to see the either absorption or the emission because I have to observe spectroscopy. For that, what I'll do? I'll create a situation such that the molecule will transit from its down state to excited state. Now the question is, now what is that selection rule? It is known as selection rule. From where, from ground state, the atom will go where? Or the molecule will go where? For normal vibrational spectroscopy, the initial selection rule which we apply, that is delta V is equal to plus minus one. So to get this delta V value, I have, in this lecture I have given you direct consequences, but it needs some rigorous calculation. Uh, the selection rule is delta V is equal to plus minus one. That means if the molecule is at uh, vibrational lower energy level, then if it is at zero level, it will go to one. If it is at one level, it will go to two. This is the only options for that molecule because selection rule is delta V plus minus one. Suppose I am applying a selection rule for delta V plus minus one. That means the molecule first, it is at V is equal, uh, at first state is V plus one and it is going to V. So it is actually giving you the emission concept. Then what will happen? After the transition, if you apply it from in, uh, in the selection rule V plus one to V, you will get the uh, amount of energy it will emit as omega oscillation. Thus, uh, by, do the vice versa. If I want that the molecule is going from V to V plus one, again, I am getting the same frequency for absorption. First one is for the emission, and the next one is for the absorption, the same frequency. That means, for the harmonic oscillator, if I want to get the transition, what I am getting, I, I am always getting a single frequency. And since the selection rule is only V plus minus one, that means initially if the molecule is at two state, it will either it can go to three or it can come to one. If it is at three state, either it can go to four or it can come to two. That is, there are no other option. Okay. So always in any type of transition for the simple harmonic oscillator, or oscillator you will get only a single frequency and that frequency is omega oscillation okay so let us check that means whenever the molecule will transit from its lower energy level to its higher energy level it will give you a single frequency okay irresponsible of that means from which state it is going suppose it is at the v is equal to zero state in this figure so after absorbing the radiation it can go fast to one if it is at one state after absorbing, it can go to two. If it is at two after absorbing, it can go to three. In this way, it will move. So whatever it is, from where one state to when it will move to other state, it will give you only a single frequency. Then that frequency is omega oscillation. So it, you will get in reality, if you check the spectrum, you will get only a single line. So let us check it. In the upper figure, uh, it is the theoretical predictions. If you get the uh, infrared spectrum of HCl molecule, you will get only a single line. You see that we are, we are getting a single spectrum here, a single line. And this single line is due to the 
only a single frequency it can be in the lower figure i have given you the real uh, uh, absorption figure of uh, the hcl molecule so you will see that if you compare the both the figures the envelope of both the figure are same but in the lower one you will get several lines the question is why these several lines are coming so i'll describe in, in after a four or five slide that why these several lines are coming it should come one line only but i am getting several lines there must be some error but till now what we have considered so let us just discuss about that error till now we have discussed that hcl is behaving, behaving like a simple harmonic oscillator that is the meaning because it simple harmonic oscillator does not exist in reality in reality what we have in reality we have an harmonic oscillator in nature okay why that is so reality says that hcl do not obey simple harmonic motion because if the bonds between the atom is stressed then there comes a point when it will break and dissociates into its two atoms so it will not follow that simple uh, ex expansion and compression rather it follows a function that function is known as mohr's function and if i want to show you that function the figure will be will look like this reality may if you compress or expand the system after expanding it will uh, it will not come to its original position if it come to its original position i have shown you with the green color light it should follow the harmonic line but in reality it does not follow the harmonic line so it gives a this type of figure which is mohr's function and this type of uh, structure is known as an harmonic oscillator again if you solve the an harmonic oscillator for the schrodinger equation then the solution is not simple as previous but rather the solution will give you the value of energy in terms of spectroscopic unit in terms of this that means v plus half omega e bar minus v plus half square xc omega e bar plus v5 v plus half cube y omega e bar plus dot 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 dot, dot. this is the and harmonic terms because here we get some terms x e y z e etc these are all known as an harmonic constants and these are due to that after expansion it will not come to its original position so these are the correction in reality reality may the system always behave like an harmonic oscillator and if it behaves like an harmonic oscillator the selection rule again will not be very simple like the previous one here we can get any selection rule delta v plus minus 1 is also possible delta v plus minus 2 is also possible delta e plus minus 3 is also possible everything is possible so if that is so then always one transition is not possible so for an harmonic oscillator we can get any transition so if the initial molecule is at zero vibrational level it can go to one also it can go to two also it can go to three also it can go to four also normally in when we deal with an harmonic oscillator we generally consider three types of uh, selection rule only plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and plus minus 3 okay so if you consider this three selection rule what we will get suppose i am applying first selection rule plus minus 1 the delta e or the frequency i'll get the formula will be omega e bar into 1 minus twice x if i am applying selection rule plus minus 2 the term will change it will become 2 omega e bar into 1 minus 3 x e and if i apply selection rule delta e plus minus 3 i'll get this term okay so instead of getting only one frequency i am getting three very close lines not one line i am getting three line okay actually these three lines are known as fundamental line first overtone line second overtone line in reality i can get several other overtone points so in reality what we get in hcl we don't get one peak rather we get three vibrational peaks okay now this is a case of hcl only now you can question that hcl is a very simple system but in nature we have several molecules which have large number of atoms so what will happen to that those molecules we have polyatomic system so they are very much complex to this right so what amount of frequency i'll get for polyatomic system that is a very famous rule so we'll discuss that part because my time is i think we are uh, shortage we have we have shortage of time so i'll move very fast now let us discuss about the vibrational frequencies which a polyatomic system will give us suppose i have a poly molecule which have n atoms okay so if n atom we know that we have a three coordinate system so if three coordinates are fixed 
then I can say that the three the system has three degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is what? It is a general term used to explain the dependence on uh, the specific parameters, which uh, gives us the number of uh, movement of that particle. If the molecule is free to move in three-dimensional space without changing any of its say, uh, shape, then I can say that uh, the molecule has only translational change. So what will happen for that molecule? The degrees of freedom will be 3n minus 3. Because only the translational change a molecule has. The translational change means it can change only in x direction, y direction, or z direction. So degrees of freedom will be 3n minus 3. As there are three translation and also a system since it is a three-dimensional system, so it has rotation also. So as there are three translation and rotation, we do not have the internal vibration. So for we can what are the formula for nonlinear system? We have 3n minus 6 one fundamental vibration. This is for the nonlinear system. Nonlinear means there is no linearity in the system. But if there is a linear system, that means at least one axis is fixed. So for three, uh, for linear system, what will be the fundamental vibration? It will be 3n minus 5. So this is the case. Okay. So for n atomic uh, molecule, if I have n atomic molecule, then what will be the number of bond in that n atomic molecule? It will be n minus 1. Suppose I have a three atomic system. So what will be the bond? And they are linear. Okay. So what will be the number of bonds? Suppose the example is CO2. So I have three atoms, C, A, 1C, 2 oxygen. So CO2, what, what will be the number of bond? Number of bond, bond will be 2. Okay. So similarly, if I have N atom, so number of bond will be N minus 1. So the N minus 1 bond uh, between that atoms and what I'll get the um, um, motions for that? For nonlinear, it will be 3N minus 6 and for linear, it will be 3N minus 5 in that case. So let us apply it for example. Suppose I have a diatomic molecule. Diatomic molecule means capital N will be 2. Then what will be the fundamental vibration? What is the formula? 3n minus 5. Okay. 3n minus 5 is what? Because for linear system, I have the concept formula is 3n minus 5. So for diatomic molecule, the fundamental vibration will be 3 into 2 minus 5. That means 1. So HCl should have only one fundamental vibration. For water, water is H2O. N is equal to 3. Okay, so what will be the fundamental vibration? Water is a non-linear molecule because there is an angle. So what will be the fundamental vibration? It will be 3 into 3 minus 6. Means 3 allowed fundamental vibration mode for the water is there. Okay, now this vibrational mode are also known as the modes of vibration of the molecule. So if I have a molecule, only by applying this formula, I can say that what will be the number of modes if possible for that molecule. So let us check for the water. What are the fundamental vibrational modes? For water, what I have got, what already formula we applied? For water, the formula is n is equal to 3. That means there should be three fundamental mode of vibration. Let us take the fundamental mode of vibration. For water, what we can get? One mode is due to the symmetric stretching. So the mid figure here, I have described it in terms of symmetric stretching. You see that since in water, H are the lighter system and uh, oxygen is the heavier system. So oxygen will not move. Instead of that, the hydrogen will move. In the mid figure, I have shown you the symmetric stretching. In the left hand side, I have shown you the bending moves. And the, in the right hand side, I have shown you the asymmetric stretching. Okay, so water has three modes of vibration. One is due to the symmetric stretching, another one is due to the asymmetric stretching, and the third one is due to the bending, bending mode. So all the mode will give you separate, separate frequency. Whereas in HCl, all, only you have a single stretching mode. But in water, you have three different modes. And all these modes will give you separate, separate frequencies. So let us check it further. What I have told you, water has three uh, modes. First one is symmetric modes. Normally, if it gives you symmetric modes, it has a specific frequency. I have shown you the value of frequency given here. If it has an asymmetric stretching, asymmetric mode, it, it will give you a separate frequency. And if it has a, a symmetric mode, sorry, bending mode, it will give you a separate frequency. Now, all these modes are IR active. How that is so? What are the conditions for IR activity? The system should have a change in dipole moment. Let us check it for the symmetric mode first. In the first line, what I have shown you was symmetric mode. 
the mid one is the normal molecule the left hand side is the distorted molecule and the right hand side also is the distorted molecule if you see that dipole moment dipole moment i have shown you with the arrow you will see that there is a change in dipole moment here in all the cases for the next one is the vibrational mode in the vibrational mode also i am getting the change in dipole moment and the third one is the asymmetric stretching mode and that is asymmetric stretching mode also i am getting the change in the dipole moment also so all of these modes are ir active and if they are ir active they, they water mole if you see the vibrational spectra of water you will get three frequencies so here we go for the three frequencies upper one is the theoretical spectrum and the lower one uh, sorry upper one is the experimental spectrum and the lower one is the theoretical spectrum what you get in water case 1640 cm inverse is the bending region and uh, that is a wide band between 4000 to 3000 angstrom which is a combination of symmetric and asymmetric mode both so i have shown you that in the left hand side symmetric and asymmetric mode 3490 and 3240 these are the two modes for the Uh, symmetric stretching and the asymmetric stretching and 1640 is for the bending mode which is for the uh, bending vibration of the water molecule so here are some other uh, um, description of the ir mode of different molecule so by observing this peaks what we can get we can get the information about the Uh, uh modes of the system and from that mode we can get the information about the size of the system what is the size of this system what is the shape of the system what are the uh, functional group what are the atoms what are the uh, bonding present in that system so this is another system so different different system will give you different different peak position different different frequencies from that frequency you can get the idea about that system now this is the vibrational spectrum now in reality again i'll say that not only vibration exists vibration exists with rotation because for rotation we need rotational transition we need very small energy which is less than the vibration energy so when you are getting a vibrational energy at the same time you will get a rotational energy suppose i have a system and it is giving me vibrational spectra i'll say that definitely it has given already rotational spectra also. so reality me when we get a vibrational spectrum in reality we get a rotational spectrum in that also okay so when we get a get a transition between two vibrational lines at the same time we generally get get some transition in the rotational line also so without rotation you cannot get vibration you can say that only you are getting a rotational spectrum that can possible but if we are getting vibrational spectra definitely you are getting some rotational spectra actually when we get a um, <coughs> vibrational spectra that spectra is known as rotational vibrational spectra so this is a specific approximation which is known as von oppen hammer approximation which says that when you get a vibrational spectra in reality we get rotational and vibrational spectra both so these are the formula for that i will not discuss this in detail this is the energy value if we apply schrodinger equation for both but we the v term is this corresponding to the vibrational spectrum and j term is corresponding to the rotational spectrum here we will get two types of selection rule one is for the v another is for the j so if you get the you know, transition line you will get the frequencies these are the formula for those so if you get the spectra in reality for the vibrational spectrum because it is a combination of rotation and vibration both then what will happen inside a vibrational transition you will get some rotational transition So why? Because already for rotational transition, the energy requirement is less, and I have shown you here. Because here I have given you in the left hand side upper part figure. This is a transition between only two vibrational level. But when you are getting a transition between only two vibrational level, for one vibrational line, you will get several rotational transition. So you you can see that you are getting several rotational transition. For rotational transition, there are selection rule delta j plus one, delta j minus one, and delta j zero. okay so red line represents the plus 1 delta j plus 1 the uh, violet line represent delta j minus 1 and uh, delta j zero lines represent the blue one actually in reality when you are getting a vibrational single line you will get several rotational so now let us discuss that previous figure i have shown you for the hcl in hcl what we get a single line instead of single line we get several small small lines and these small lines are due to the rotational transition so when we get a vibrational transition 
At the same time, we get several rotational transitions. So these are the examples for those rotational transitions. Now, let us move to the application where we can apply the infrared spectra. Now it is in Corona times, we are dealing with uh, IR spectroscopy very much. That is, we are frequently using IR detector. So let us first little bit discuss about that, how it acts. For IR detector, what we have, first we have a transmitter, which will give you the IR line. Uh, I think someone has raised a line. I have two minutes. Let me finish it. Then I can give you the answer of your question. Will it be okay? Okay, ma'am. Okay. So I have an IR transmitter. So it will give you uh, the IR uh, signal. And the, from it will incident on the object. And the, from the object, it will revert back to the detector. When it will revert back to the detector, you will get the information about that object. That is the working of IR detector. Where we are using it? Nowadays, all of us know that we are using IR detector to detect the body temperature. Because we have to find which person is have fever or not. Because in corona time, fever is a very important factor. So to identify the body temperature, the IR mode detection is very important. And when I have fever, then the radiation my body will emit. I cannot see that radiation, but IR can detect that radiation. So I can IR with the help of IR detector, I can detect the temperature of the body. You can see that in this figure I have shown you. If the temperature is more than 44.2 degree, the range will be given, the range will give me yeah, the yellowish. So here the um, you can see that the spec the person is wearing its temperature is very less it is metal its temperature is not very high it is around 20 degrees centigrade whereas okay. the skin has higher temperature from that around in between 30 to 40 degrees in the lower figure i have shown you a bomb the figure of a bomb blast if you see it no, by normal video you can see only yellow light but if it is higher right what you can see that the temperature of that mid region is very much high uh, corresponding to the, the outer side region. So here is another one. <clears throat> Always the temperature of our eye region or the mouth region is more. If you get the flavor of that, if you touch your uh, put your hand in front of your mouth, you can see that you can feel the temperature. Actually, from mouth we can give the radiation which is in infrared region and its temperature is higher. So nowadays we are using this technique of IR detection to identify the body temperature. So this is the picture of a airport. Where airport, we, uh, we can, from several person, we can identify. Um, if I have a detector, I can identify the, temp, the person who have fever or not. So, here, about more than around 40 degrees centigrade, then its, temp, uh, this, its signal will be red. So, the lower one figure is the temperature of that region where, from, that, from the air detector, we can detect that where the more pollutions or the more uh, engines or the more um, industries are working. So, this is the picture of that. So IR imaging at the night also we can use the night the, the camera where um, through the use of IR we can detect the temperature also in this figure you can see that the body always it is hot because I have temperature and the radiation which I emit it is in the infrared region whereas the trees the environment or the metal body that means the car they are very cold in that case they will give me that comparison picture. Not only that, for the pollution detection also, we normally use the IR mode. So already I have told you that I can detect the uh, quantity of system. That means if I want to uh, pollute, uh, monitor the environment pollution, I can detect the concentration of H2O, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide for environmental monitoring, we can use that. For medical diagnostic also, we can use IR modes for identifying O3, NH3 modes. For bomb detection also, suppose some persons have kept the bomb inside the... Um, inside the ground. So if, if you put the air detector from the metal, the air, air detector can detect that um, uh, material also. Similarly, you can detect the chemical also because PNT, RDS, this type of chemical, they have specific region of um, um, IR spectra. And from that uh, detection, you can identify the chemical present in the material. Mainly in the airports and all these things, when we have air detector, we can detect that uh, bomb material or the uh, weapons to this IR detection techniques. So the uh, another application of uh, it is the microwave oven. All of us know that we have microwave oven also, where normally the molecule generally vibrates. When it vibrates, suppose I am giving the microwave uh, from the microwave um, spectra, microwave source, 
the food which have water molecules they will start vibrating when they will start vibrating as well as they will rotate when they vibrate and rotate at that time they will get increase the heat and the food get heated up but remember that for microwave oven you cannot heat a food which is dry always it should be wet that means it should have water molecule or the oil molecule in it in it without that the microwave oven will not work so these are some um, publications of mine where I, we have discussed i mean uh, this is the publication of minakshi and mine also we have uh, discussed several ir techniques here so that's all